You probably have heard of Notion already, and if you did not, Notion is an application which allows you to take some notes to sort your documents. It could be either for your personal use, just for your business maybe. And today I wanted to share with you how I use it also for university to apply different study methods such as active recall, retrospective revision planning and different ones. I will share with you how I'm already using it, but it's important to say also that Notion is not my only resource. I also use different resources depending on what I actually have to do because it could be great to take some notes but you cannot really print them very easily and different little stuff so I'm also going to talk very briefly about what do I use Notion for and what do I don't. So we are on my uni hub page so if you watched my last video which was about getting summer organized and was about Notion I think I quickly went on my uni page there was just the archive sections because here I just have my archives of the last semester so in case I need anything I still have all my courses from last year I still have all my notes that I took and so on so I just kept it in like this little archive so I know if I need it I can go to it so for the moment I have a little list of things I want to do for this week and then just below you have all my classes that I'm taking this semester so I'm currently studying in Hong Kong for a year as an exchange normally I'm studying in Switzerland I'm a life science engineering student I think taking notes on a computer for example could be pretty useful for certain subjects but of course not all of them so so here I have all my different classes, I will show you a bit how I use them and then here I have a calendar but as you can see it's a bit empty. I personally prefer to use the Apple calendar, just the one you have on every Apple devices because I guess it's pretty easy to synchronize everywhere, to just change time slots, to have different colors and I think maybe the Notion one is not the most convenient one. I know that I'm not maybe the best yet at Notion so probably I don't know exactly everything that I can use on it. Um, to make the most out of it actually but I think it's not the best one for just really having an overall view but it's pretty good just to keep little signs on the assignment or things you have to do. So I'm not gonna lie, there are some classes where I absolutely do not have anything. For example, signal and system, electronic circuits, I don't think I have a lot of things. I just have, well, the midterm date and the syllabus because that's just the thing I wanted to keep there. But I don't think it's actually the one I'm using for this kind of classes because for example, signal and systems, I have a lot of homework to give. So I have to do the homework and then it's graded. It will be based on sketch some signals, uh, compute those certain things and so and I don't think that would make that much sense to actually do everything on a computer so this is why I'm not using Notion for this kind of classes I just kind of did like a little page for all my classes because I just thought it was like more convenient to have everything there but here maybe we are going to go through the page which could be the most important for this video and just to show you how I use Notion for those study methods so this class is introduction to biotechnology and basically we have free exams spread for the semester and it's just by hard learning so there's not really exercises to solve it's just you have to know the information's on there and that's why I think active recall and also retrospective revision planning are the two best tools for just learning that and I hope maybe scoring the best I can do on the exams. So if you don't know what active recall is, active recall is based on trying to make you learn the information in another way, in an active way. So instead of just reading through your summaries, you're actually going to ask questions of yourself, trying to test yourself on the subject to see what you know and what you don't. So you won't lose too much time to be reading something you already know and you will maybe not realize that there is a subject you feel less comfortable in. If if you just like read free without even testing yourself so I'm using Notion for active recall because I think it's pretty easy with like the little toggle that they have so basically you can just ask yourself a question hide the answer and then just show it it will not replace a flashcard app but for me I think for this class it was more than enough because it's not for example all the muscles of the body so it's not like I'm going to remember another of the questions and then it's just like you just see where the informations are here it's a bit different it's just just more overall question about the subject that I'm seeing and retrospective revision planning. I discovered this technique on Ali Abdal video because he was sharing that actually planning in a function of time like here I'm gonna do I'm gonna study for three hours this subject and then three hours this part of another subject and so on. It's really hard because you cannot predict the future and actually you don't know exactly already when you're planning on how you're gonna learn which subjects are actually going to take you more time, which subjects 
are going to be a bit the hardest for you. So instead, retrospective revision is based on trying to learn the material and focus on which subject would you be the less happy about having an exam tomorrow, as he said in this video. So basically, you're going to try which subject are the hardest for you and which are the easiest so you won't lose too much time on the one which you already kind of know, which could be the case if, for example, in your revision planning before an exam, you put so many hours to study this subject instead. And finally, the third method that I'm using also to learn in this subject is space repetitions because it has been proved that you will try to beat the forgetting curve, which means that every time you're learning something, this information will just kind of disappear or go away of your memory at a certain speed based on the time also if you reviewed it. And if you review this information after a certain amount of time, this information will actually stay and stuck in your mind. And that's what we're trying to do instead of just having to review once or reviewing once and then not for six months where you will have actually forgotten everything you learned six months ago. You're going to review them pretty regularly. So when you will arrive at your deadlines for your exam, for example, it is far more likely if you reviewed following the schedule that actually your subject are going to be a bit more in your brain. So sometimes it could sound like space repetitions is not very compatible with retrospective learning, but actually I think they are because I will try to plan when I'm supposed to review the subject. So for example, after three days, after a week or something, but also with the color code that I'm going to show you, it allows me also to see what is the most difficult one. Like for example, if I want to review every three days, five days or something, and then I realize there's a subject I really know and I'm not supposed to review one which is still in the red color that I do not actually know, I can just adjust. It's just for me to have an idea of when I'm actually supposed to review the things. So this class is spread in three parts because we were supposed to have three different lectures. We only have two, but whatever. It just means that we have three different exams through the semester. I already had the first one with the first lecturer, which was here in part one. So if we go through it, well, hopefully and happily, everything is in green because, well, the exam is already done. So I went to the exam kind of knowing that I was pretty okay about all the subject. Of course, there are always little questions that were a bit harder, but I think I was pretty much more ready than I was for any by heart exam before. So for example, here, if I go to one of my lecture, here you can see that I only have questions. So what I was doing during the lecture is that I had my slides on one side and then this notion page. And when the professor was going through the slides, I was writing some questions. If I had time, I would also add the answer but if I would not have this time during the lecture, I would just come back after the lecture just to finish the questions properly. But it's more important because during the lecture, maybe you're going to realize, ah, oh, that's something he could ask us. Or like, hmm, you really precise this stuff. He asked this question to like the students. So maybe that's something you expect us to know. So you can, even if you don't know the answer yet, you can just write the questions. And then after the lecture, you can go through the solution, solve it. You write the solution under the question. And when you're reviewing, you will actually actually learn that. So for example, what are restriction enzymes and, and restriction site? Um, so it's yeah, molecular scissors, but basically I was always trying to answer the question and then I would have the answers. And sometimes you can also have some toggle which have toggle inside. So that allows you, for example, to spread like which had two techniques to clone DNA using blah, blah, blah. You will have this too. And then once you answer that, you would have another toggle for something else. So I think this kind of hierarchy in the questions were actually pretty useful and basically I have that for every single part of all of my lectures so I have kind of a bunch of questions maybe I did not sort enough but I prefer to really be sure that I actually knew every information and because I'm not very good at sorting what is really important than from what is not I just have the feeling that everything can be asked everything could be pretty important so just in case I just keep everything and for example here you have keep the six DNA vectors in the applications and here you would have a table because you can very easily just in search, table, picture, whatever you need. And so once I would be reviewing the question, I will go to my little state. So it's like my state of learning that I have here in Notion. So retrospective learning. And then I would decide how I consider that I know the subject. So I had a few. So reviewed once just means that I just went through the question once. Then I had all those sections like middle came in bad, bad. And then read once again. It was just for me to remind myself that I would be less stressed if I just read everything once even if I already know the question and the answers and then for example when you're reviewing you can realize okay this thing is in red when the others are in green I should definitely take time to 
learn part three instead of part one that I already know. So for the tag, I just have like assessment because well, I have three different assessments, so I have different tags, questions. It was just for me to know if I completed all questions because as I said, sometimes you just don't have time during the lecture. So I would just like write down the questions and then just go back through it. And actually that was also a way of reviewing. So that was pretty great. And here I have a few dates. So that's not all the days that I reviewed, but actually like this exam was pretty at the beginning of the semester. We had, I don't know, maybe like here it says for me. So we had like five lectures of 80 slides. So yeah, they were pretty early. So I just put like the dates. There's not always the same like space between them because that just arrived pretty early, but I tried to prepare even a bit more in advance for the part B that I have now. And so if I come back on my page, I have here reviewing plan and you can see that I have day zero, day one, three, seven, blah, blah, blah. And so I wrote that to give me an idea of what could be a good way of like reviewing things based on, of course, space repetitions. So I would have said that day zero is finish the questions, like to write all of them if I did not have time to just finish. And day one, three, seven, 15 and 30 would be review the questions. I used those dates because I saw that they could be useful as well, it's pretty new. And then you just will make the little space larger and larger as long as you remember the things because space repetitions is not based on review the subject every two days, but actually you're going to review it pretty after a certain short amount of time at the beginning. And this amount of time is going to get larger and larger and larger as the information will actually stay in your mind for longer because you reviewed it correctly. So actually for this lecture, that was a bit weird because I was really, I just made my planning about how it was, but the two first lectures were actually just really reviewing very basic things we already saw in biology and also that we saw again in part one. So honestly, a bit boring, I would say, because, well, we've been like told already twice the very same thing in the same lecture in the same semester. But however, so <laughs> actually for the moment, I did not have to review this class that much, but I have the same working plan. So I have assessment, knowledge to know where I am currently, date of lecture, and then I would have, so that's my day zero, and then I would have day one, three, seven, fifteen. So I first started to see, but like review of fundamentals, I don't think that makes that much sense for me to review after seven, fifteen, thirty days because those are informations that I've been learning for almost the beginning of my degree. So those informations are already pretty stuck in my mind. So I don't stress myself too much, but I know probably that for the like next lectures I will have new subjects and more information that I would have to learn by heart. So I know that my table is ready, and then if I would open my page. I would have lecture nine and then I can just, I always change the font, put it full width, and then you can just have the name of your lecture and then you can just directly start to type right through it. And so just to start a toggle, you can well either use the slash and you just have everything or you can just use this little triangle and then you would have a question, what is, I don't know. And then you will just answer below or just put a screenshot of the site where you add or just let it empty and then you can pass to the other one. And I think it's pretty useful to use it that way. And as you can see here, there's nothing in a toggle, it's an empty toggle. So in comparison, if I wrote something and I already filled the information, you will see that the little toggle is in black when it's in gray for the one that answered. So that was pretty useful as well when I was reviewing and finishing the question to just see, okay, those ones I already did or just one I did not. So basically this is how I would use active recall. So based on question and toggles that I would put on my different pages, retrospective learning, which is based on actually sorting the different parts in my lecture about how well I know the information with like this color code or whatever you want. And then I have also space repetition, which is based on when I'm going to review the information. And so finally, for this video, we are going to modify a bit this page because I think it's lacking a bit of information, important stuff. So we are just going to add little stuff. So when I'm going on my UniHub page, I actually can already see what I have to do, what are, for example, the subtexts that I should review or that I have any important deadlines. I know there is a lot of formulas that you can also use in Notion. To be totally honest, I'm absolutely not a master of it. I should really definitely take time to learn how to properly use Notion with 
with all their function things you can use i can also show you how easy it is to just have little stuff also based on retrospective learning i know that there are some subjects that are going to be far easier so it also allows me to have kind of overview when i'm going on this page about what i should probably pay attention to so i just add this little retrospective learning and here i'm going to try to add either a little table or something just for me to sort that there are some subjects which i should definitely spend more time than others so here i'm creating a new data source so overall material um retrospective learning and then I'm just going to add a new database so I'm going to link probably the pages I guess just to see which one are the most difficult like which one I should focus on I can also directly link the page that I want to so I just put the little plans below because <laughs> actually they're not really useful anyways and so for example here I can very easily link all my different pages so I would have this one as well and here I'm going to add different sections so what i want to know actually while using this retrospective learning thing is which one are the hardest ones so i'm going to use status and stages all use you to just have those different sections so i'm going to write as difficulty so if you change this one you can put for example difficult if you have really like basic sections and you can make it a bit like more detailed if you prefer uh, medium and that allows you just to sort all the material so for example if i go back to that so i linked my classes already i think this one is probably medium or difficult there's pretty much a lot of work to do and i think that would definitely be the class i would be less happy if i had an exam tomorrow so i'm gonna put difficult for the moment here this one is okay for the moment well with the classes I have for the moment it's pretty easy and then you can sort them like this so you have tax section and then you can uh, just add some tax just to review today or if you want to add for example assignments assignment you and I just wanted to add some little notes so what to review so in case I have anything that I think it should be nice to review it I can write it down uh, different characteristics of signals like i know that i'm actually mixing a bit some information so i should actually review that i know that i have this assignment which is due with this tag basically you can just when you open your uni hub you will have for example this like little recall oh okay signal and system i don't have maybe something to do but it's in red so maybe i should take time to review and once you were doing something else and you did not really have time to review but you had time to like take some notes you just wrote for example characteristic signals because that's not the thing you were the most comfortable in and when i'm coming back and taking time to review actually signal and system i know that i can just review that and those are important things so yes i think this page was missing a bit that so i will just add all my other pages Okay, so I changed a bit my overall material retrospective learning. So in my tags, I add also um, midterm soon because that could be something that can happen. I still have my tags of assignment due that I know that I have to submit soon. And then I just had what to review. So I know actually that when I'm taking time to review, I should go directly to that unless I have something more important to do in this subject. But that also going to remind me that actually that I don't know. Because sometimes when you think something is hard to learn or to actually know it is really tempting just to let it on the side and try not to go for it because it's so much easier to review something we already know than actually take time to understand and learn something which could be a bit harder so this is all i wanted to talk about in this video i really hope you found it useful that was just a bit to share how i use notion for space repetition active recall and retrospective learning which i think are three methods which are super important and that really changed my whole way of learning so i hope this gave you some some ideas about how you can use Notion efficiently for your academic use. So thanks for watching until the end of this video and see you in the next one.